Hello again. In this video I'll be completing Crestorio 2, which as it turns out is rather a lot of factorioing. Normally in my videos I like to tell stories about the characters in the game I'm playing, and while we do have our little factory man here, this is more of a story about one man's descent into madness. The, the man is me, in case you didn't get that. Now I love Factorio, but I'd actually only played about 100 hours before starting this. Which is a lot of time to play a video game, but Factorio is one of those games which operates on a completely different timescale. Most would consider me a total noob, with an hour count just barely into triple digits. And that's just my way of warning you that there will be things in this video which may frighten you, shock you, even disgust you if you're a Factorio veteran. Troopen, Nilaus, Dosh. If you're watching, I'm sorry for what you're about to see. There will be inefficiencies, bottlenecks, and a whole lot of spaghetti. Mamma mia. Now Crestorio 2, as you may or may not know, is one of Factorio's many overhaul mods. As far as I know going in, it's not stupidly long-winded like space exploration or anything, but it is nonetheless a significant extension to the late game. It also changes a lot of things about the base game, like crafting ratios and such, but it's been a very long time since I actually played that, so I'm sorry for not pointing a lot of those out, but I simply won't realise that certain things have changed. Anyway, enough talking about it, let's get into it. We start our journey pretty much as usual. Crash landed, but surrounded by some new faces. A little reactor that I'm sure is mostly stable, as well as a lab and some assemblers. These are important since in Crastoria you don't start with the ability to make them. So step one then naturally is to get the ability to make them, because we won't get very far without it. Research in Crastoria takes the form of data cards, ranging from basic to singularity. The basic cards are essentially some sticks and rocks that you mash together and then feed into research labs to learn the meat and taters of factory building. And while our little factory man is preparing said sticks and rocks, let's talk about a few other mods that are active here. One of which you'll see early on but will quickly disappear is mining drones. I just decided they're kind of lame. They might be pretty OP, but it's hard to say because I didn't use them for long enough to find out. Anyway, like I said, they'll be gone pretty soon, so don't worry about it too much. What you will see for considerably longer, all the way through in fact, is transport drones. So far as I can tell, these are basically just a worse version of trains designed for dummies, which is convenient, as that's exactly what I am. I'm sure I wouldn't have any real problem learning to use trains properly, but I've never touched them before, and like a real boomer I'm not about to start now. Anyway, our first research to finish is Automation Core, so now we can move on to... Automation. Right, that's fair enough I guess, okay. These first few techs are pretty quick to get through and the next thing you know we're making a horrible little hand-fed spaghetti zone to make tech cards in whilst researching the next tech card, which is called automation. I chose that almost entirely because it will let me build gun turrets. Personally I can only feel relaxed in Factorio when surrounded on all sides by guns so I want to get that sorted right quick. That being said, I don't actually appear to be in any immediate danger here. But to make automation cards, which will simply be referred to as red science from here on, I just need automation cores and blank tech cards. Automation cores are used in almost all of the early machines, from inserters to offshore pumps, so we'll need quite a few of them, but I don't really feel okay making anything at all large or permanent while I'm still so reliant on burners. And with that in mind, let's make a little steam power plant. It's honestly been so long since I've done this that I actually can't remember how any of these basic setups should look, but whatever, I built something here and now we're not reliant on those crappy windmills. With electricity I can build what we in the industry call a starter base, which is just a way of saying that this will look awful and you just have to be okay with it. I'm struggling to make a basic furnace stack right here, so you can tell the rust is very much real. But skip forward a bit and I'm making a little factory for inserters and belts. At some point soon I'll download the little mod to display my playtime so you can get a good sense of how long things are taking me. But so you know for now, this is about an hour and a half in. Another mod I have are these basic little construction drones which are fairly cheap to build and simply operate out of your inventory. They'd definitely be extremely helpful if I actually used them properly but to be honest I didn't realise just how helpful they could have been until I almost had actual drones up. The next thing on my list is to make greenhouses and automate wood production. Since in Crestoria you need large quantities of wood pretty much all the way through to the endgame, 
since it's used in green circuits and I can't just run around cutting trees down forever. To make them I need glass, which is what I've researched stone processing for. It allows us to make these big crushers, which are modelled on those machines that make incredibly satisfying videos to float around the internet every now and then. Anyway, here they crush rocks into sand. They can actually crush anything, essentially functioning as a garbage disposal, but for now, sand, because of course glass is just melted down sand. Instead of doing this cleanly in a scalable manner, for now I just hooked up a few smelters to a single crusher, cooked some spaghetti and voila, glass. Just in time for greenhouses to finish researching. Our next research project will be the logistic tech card, green science, which leads to all manner of nice things. I quickly made a little line off to the side here and made walls for later, before making a little bolognese factory that spits out greenhouses, which need wood to build. So once I had a couple, I set them up next to the bolognese and had them throw some of their produce back into it. It's kind of an Ouroboros situation. I made another really terrible little factory here to make automation cards so that I can at least say I've automated some science, and then I fed that up through a little line of labs. In case you didn't know by the way, you can choose which side of the belt an inserter outputs to in Crastorio, which lets you have two intermediate products along the same line without having to do a load of splitter stuff. It will also allow us to later on saturate belts more easily on high output production lines. So we're just over three hours in now and we've fully automated red science too. Nice. And oh hey look, there's that little playtime UI up in the corner now. How convenient. Obviously then, my next mission is to automate green science, which means it's time to make green circuits. This is one of the few recipes I know for a fact has changed significantly from vanilla. You need far less copper cable for a start, and like I mentioned earlier, you also need wood. So this is what my little production line looks like. I think I could have actually made significantly more circuits with this amount of copper cables, but whatever, it'll do for now. I know that I'll need to make absolutely ridiculous amounts of these later, and I feel like I'm very unlikely to do it here, so it's fine, don't worry about it. With those, I should be good to automate green science, but I want a little more space to do that in, so I'm just going to handcraft enough to research landfill and then make a little space for it later. While I'm waiting, let's go ahead and deal with the nearest biter nest, which nicely demonstrates another of Factorio's changes. You actually have to aim, and your projectiles have collision now. It's a bit of a strange change to make, since for the vast majority of the time it's not actually going to make any real difference, other than the fact that you have to point your cursor at what you want to shoot if you're doing it yourself. And to offset the occasional missed shot, bullets do considerably more damage and magazines last quite a bit longer. With that done, let's build a quick factory to keep us supplied with long inserters and then a quick and dirty steel smeltery, which requires a new resource, coal coke, made by burning raw coal with wood. I can't remember exactly why I started making steel now, but you need it for plenty of nice things, including fast inserters, so it's nice to have. Now then, it's time for green science. You'll notice that throughout this playthrough my science factories are generally very mediocre. It doesn't really matter that much, because the recipes produce 5 per run, and to be honest, you just don't need a massively high throughput of tech cards. In case it's not horribly, painfully obvious, I don't really aim for even close to optimal play in Factorio, which occasionally leads to frustration, but maybe that'll make good content if you're into that kind of thing. Anyway, at the moment we're being held up by iron, since we're just mining this ugly combined coal, stone, copper and iron patch, so I'm looking to expand towards other ore deposits. But again, I can only feel safe when surrounded by walls and turrets. And really, before I start doing that kind of thing, I should think about getting a car. And turrets and walls are no problem, but in Crastorio you can't just run vehicles on any solid fuel. You have to produce actual fuel for them instead. It was simple enough to tack a single assembler making turrets onto the belt line here, but to make fuel for our car, first we need to start making petrol. I forgot to start recording for about 10 minutes whilst I set up the pump jack, so you join the little factory man here as he sets up a few refineries. I decided to go and do some exploration and biter clearing on foot though anyway, because I was getting really frustrated with this crappy resource patch. Quickly finding decent patches of stone, iron, coal, and I only died once. The run back is absolutely tragic as always. You can actually place down custom spawns in Crastorio in the form of shelters. I popped one down by my initial constructions and never made another, because you just never assume you're going to die. That's defeatism, that'll get you killed by a commissar. 
Whilst building my turret wall to encompass the new ore patches and give myself space to build it, I made one of Crastorio's new weapons. The Anti-Material Rifle, which makes clearing nests extremely easy with the help of a single turret. And there we go. Seven hours in, I've set up a big wall of guns with its massive looping ammo belt. Do other people make these walls with ammo belts like this? It's how I've always played Factorio, but I have no idea if it's a common thing. With the patches secured, it's time to make the mines, starting with the stone one so that I can throw bricks on the floor everywhere. This layout will serve as the blueprint for all of my mines. Later on, I'll make one grid aligned, but you set up mines so infrequently that it probably doesn't really matter. And this is also where we start to see those transport drones that I mentioned earlier. Once I've set up little factories for engines and roads, I can start to mass produce the little trucks themselves. The system is really very simple. You have five different kinds of depot. Supply, Request, Buffer, Fluid, and Fuel. Supply and Fluid depots are essentially the same thing. It's just that a Fluid depot can, well, hold fluids. Request depots need to be supplied with drones and will then go pick up whatever you ask them to from supply depots. Fuel depots need a petroleum feed and their own stock of drones, and then they'll go and distribute said petrol to the request depots as needed. The drones can only travel along these roads, which are made of coal and bricks. Uh, next time I play Factorio, I'll learn trains, I promise, but for this playthrough you get to look at these cute little trucks instead. Sometimes they can be annoying and seem to prefer to pick up a half load from a closer but nearly empty depot than go a little further for a full load. But as far as I can tell, most of the time that could be solved by me planning properly and making better use of buffer depots, which I barely used in this run. Anyway, using the drones I set up a little furnace stack for iron with my new and shiny steel furnaces. But in Crestorio, until you start washing your ores, it takes 10 ore to output 5 plates, so the output here isn't anything to write home about. And since I mentioned it, I'll talk about it, even though it's quite a long way off. You need to enrich ores in Crestorio to get a better ratio out of them. It's done at chemical plants, and it's a whole thing. Don't worry, you'll, you'll see it plenty later, and when you do, you'll likely wish you hadn't. Anyway, back to the present. At this point, stone bricks have been building up for quite a long while. So let's do some paving. Other than the roads, I don't really go all that far with different flooring on this run, which I kind of regret because it looks a little boring. But once you have vehicles and a few exoskeletons on the go, it just feels like you don't really need to run around the base any faster anyway. Moving on, we need more power and I'd rather not rely on steam power plants forever. So let's make some of these petrol powered generators. They're very polluting, not very efficient, but they're delightfully easy. Just plug in petrol and enjoy. I made use of these loaders which Crastorio added, an abandoned feature of vanilla Factorio apparently. They can simply run a belt directly into or out of a building, and they don't even need power. They let me make a yellow belt production line that looks like this since the ratios line up nicely. This is probably the single neatest thing I built in this whole run. I'm getting towards the end of this copper patch at this point, so it's time to look for a new one in my brand new car. This is the way we talk in Tucson, Arizona. You really are the most fiendish bastard in all of New York City. <clears throat> I've actually had the car for a quite a long time. I just now finally made the fuel for it is all. You can disable this feature of Crastorio 2 if you're really attached to the idea of running your car with a wood-burning stove, but it makes perfect sense to me, so I'm happy to stick with it. Anyway, in my brand new car, I pretty much immediately found this patch. It's not massive, but it'll do for a good while. You'll notice here that after clearing the biters from the area, I collect all of their goop from around the nests. That's creep. When you harvest it, you collect biomass, which is used to make military science. And I don't want to sound like I'm just re-recording Dosh's video on this mod, which I watched back when it came out, but just like him, I never needed to make any biolabs which generate biomass indefinitely, because you only need to use it for military science. And you end up with more than you need just by expanding your base. I set up the mine and built a new stack of smelters, then waited for truckfuls of ore to arrive. And while I'm building smelters, I also put together a new steel smeltery. There's something not quite right about it, but steel is coming out of the end anyway, so whatever. I'll build a better one later, probably. Now, I've been neglecting science for a good while here while setting up all this new resource processing. So the next tech card on the list is chemical, or blue science if you prefer. It requires glass, red circuits, and sulfuric acid. 
Red circuits in Crestoria require an intermediate product called electronic components, which I think it might be impossible to make enough of late game. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. The biters are getting a little close to the wall at times, so let's start making red ammo. This production line isn't enormously pleasant to look at, but it gets the job done and will manufacture enough rounds to kill hundreds of thousands of biters throughout this playthrough, so don't be too mean about it. Back to the pursuit of chemical science, I tacked on a few crushers to the stone belt feeding my brick production to smelt into the glass I'd need for those electronic components as well as for the tech cards themselves. I figure out later that I'd need considerably more sand and glass than this, but that's pretty much how I operate, right? I make only what I need for now and then bodge in a fix to make more later when I need it. That's why my factory looks so awful. Nonetheless, two hours later we have red circuits. Again, not many of them, but we have them. So now I can make blue science. I decided to make new science production lines up here in the new space too, rather than rely on the original ones. It's easier for me to make them all produce evenly if I put them close to one another. So there you go, we're finally doing science again. And what do I pick? Well, radar of course, because you can only kill biters that you can see. Anyway, that's followed by advanced oil processing, lubricant, electric engines, and then construction bots. 14 hours in, we get to robots. But to be fair, we've had personal construction robots the whole time, so it's not really been a big deal. Whilst waiting for those to research, I was busy driving into rocks and dying, which is very good. To reclaim all my stuff, I just made an anti-materiel rifle and cleared the big nest without further incident. Back at base, I made batteries and some new oil rigs and refineries. This is a very bad little system, but lubricant comes out of the end, so it's fine. Everything's fine. And now I'm researching one of the most powerful techs in Crastorio 2. Air purification. You can put all of your pollution into these little Dyson suck masters which use washable filters. I don't make much use of them until I have logistic bots since it's a pain to transport and replace the filters before then, but if you throw a few next to your most polluting machines you'll basically never get biter attacks. Right now though it's actually time to pollute more not less. I built a few more steam plants since I was nervous about throwing too much petrol at generators since I have a chronic lack of the stuff, probably because my cracking design at this point is absolutely awful. I'll make a better one later and still struggle with not having enough though. I suppose if you rely on it for as long as I do because I'm scared of setting up nuclear then it's bound to be a problem. Anyway, we're going to do military tech cards now. I mentioned earlier that you use biomass from creep to make the cards, but you don't actually use it directly. First you have to turn it into biter research data by combining it with steel and coal coke. To make the actual tech cards you add some electronic components to the mix and boom you're researching the tank. Sort of. It's actually called the Heavy Armoured Vehicle in Crastorio because the mod adds a later game tank as well. I made a small area to consistently churn out ammo for the Heavy Armoured Vehicle and then put it to work clearing some more nests for their sweet sweet biomass. I'm not just doing this for the biomass though. This nest is actually sat directly on top of our new iron mine. Once they're dealt with I put up a little wall with a request depot to bring in some ammo for the guns. There's quite a few nice ore patches in this general area coal and rare ores to the north, another iron patch to the east, and copper and stone to the west. All of this will be assimilated soon enough, but for now I'm just after the iron. And since we're bringing in more ore, it's probably a good idea to start enriching it. For some reason I found this ore enriching process quite hard to get right throughout the playthrough. Different ores use different chemicals in the process and you have to deal with quite a few byproducts, which in itself shouldn't be difficult, but for some reason it really gave me trouble. I think some of the reason I struggle with stuff like this is due to where I put things. If I had a more modular layout that kept things scalable it'd be alright. I think this is why Factorio is so damn addictive. When I come out of a playthrough I have a horrible duality in my mind where on the one hand I want to run away and never look back, but on the other hand I feel like I could immediately do better if I just went straight back in and applied what I learned. Anyway, I, I messed up and didn't realise for a little while that I could just flare off the excess water that the dirty water filtration creates. You can feed it back into the water supply for the enriching plant, but you need to do a little circuitry to make that feed preferred over the main water line and blah blah blah, just throw it into a flare stack, it doesn't even make any pollution since it's just steam. You can even just flare off the dirty water itself, but that still generates stone, and it's nice to reclaim some of the ore using filtration plants. I don't know, I really can't quite explain how much I struggled with this actually quite simple process. 
Sometimes in a Factorio run, my brain will just grind to a halt and forget how to solve basic problems, and then I'll carry my terrible solution all the way through the playthrough rather than making a better one once the mental block has cleared. It is worth keeping in mind though that I played this entire playthrough over less than a week, so that will have contributed significantly to the mental rot. For some reason I really went full degenerate for this playthrough. Anyway, enough self-loathing, let's automate some things that really should have been automated for a very long time, like transport drones and their depots, pipes, cliff explosives and assemblers. Yes, I've been handcrafting all of those this whole time like an absolute savage. And then next we can automate drones and roboports. I had planned to try and set up a grid system and just go all in on drones, but I kind of half assed it and never really got there. But I spent a while throwing roboports into the existing base wherever they'd fit to make sure that everything was covered and the walls and turrets could be repaired or replaced automatically before extending outwards towards that rare ore that I mentioned earlier, since we'll be needing it for blue science. I made a roughly tileable wall blueprint that could be built remotely and I fed an ammo supply into it. If I were better about power generation, then I would probably have integrated lasers into my defences already, but it's okay. This is, again, fine, don't question it. On a few occasions in this run, I have production lines back up due to fluid systems filling up. Most commonly hydrogen, but right now it's heavy oil. I'm not using much lube, so my heavy oil has built up since for some reason I'm not cracking it into light oil now. Never mind, the fastest solution to this problem in Crastorio is these massive fluid tanks that hold 200,000 units. I can throw a few of these at a problem and consider it solved for a couple of hours. It's a classic example of what we in engineering call Bodget and Scarpa. Alright, back to expansion. This can technically be done completely remotely, but there's a few nests where I'm headed so I oversee it personally from the tank. Oh, sorry, I meant from the heavy armoured vehicle of course. While the robots handle the building, I set up a little space to craft logistics chests. For now, just storage and providers, but all of the logi chests use the same materials, so later this will make all five. And again, at this point I thought I'd be making some grand beautiful robo base, so I'd just build all these grids of robo ports that kind of end up serving no purpose, but that's fine, it's again, all part of the process, you see. I still haven't got the rare ore mine up and running, and I've just run out of research that uses the tech cards I've got available so far meaning I really need to get up to speed and start making some new ones. And the timing of this lines up with one day of playtime, which I guess is worth mentioning. To get at those rare ores, the miners need to be fed chlorine, which is made in the electrolysis plant, another of the new production buildings that will come to represent a lot of pain in my mind in the hours to come. But for now, this is pretty simple. You feed it water and sand and it makes chlorine and hydrogen. I'm going to need more sand for this though, which has been a bit of a sore spot for a while now. I'm still just running a single stone patch in the middle of the base and I'm not doing it particularly well either. Try not to look at it too much, it's very shy on account of how hideously ugly it is. Nonetheless, I squeeze some more stone out of it and ship it off to some crushers over here to make the sand I need for now. Again, I will need a lot of sand later, but for now I'll just make a bit more and deal with later's requirements later. So anyway, now that we can mine rare ore, we also need to balance the input belts here, but don't worry, I'll do it in a minute. We also need to enrich it, which requires hydrogen chloride. Good thing we're making hydrogen and chlorine already then. Just gotta smash the two together in a chemical plant and send it up to the enriching plant. The not so good thing is that hydrogen chloride needs one-to-one -one inputs of hydrogen and chlorine, which makes the fact that we're sucking away a load of the chlorine to the rare ore mine as a problem. So I need to make more electrolysis plants to make more extra chlorine, which means I'm making far more hydrogen than I need, which means I need more giant fluid tanks. I could also just set up a very simple circuit with a single wire to burn off excess hydrogen when the fluid system is close to full like this. Which produces no pollution either by the way, since it's just hydrogen, but I didn't do that because I'm a bad person. I just made more and more tanks whenever the system backed up. Regardless, now we're washing that rare ore and the inputs are balanced, I think. Not that it matters because the inputs aren't even remotely close to being saturated. Oh well, let's go smelt it so that we can just move on. I made this blueprint for my smelters that includes two requests and supply depots, which I think was a mistake. I, again, I think it would be okay if I made better use of buffer depots, but having more supply depots than you need just doesn't really seem to work particularly smoothly. But then, what does work smoothly in my factory, so maybe it makes perfect sense? Is it getting old how self-deprecating I am about everything yet? 
I should probably call it for now because things are only going to get worse towards the end. Anyway, with rare metal we can make blue circuits. And since they just use three materials that I'm making elsewhere and pushing into supply depots already, I can just make an extremely simple production line fed out of request depots like this. The other things I need for the next tech card, which is called the utility tech card by the way, or yellow science part one to you and me, are low density structures and rocket fuel. Okay, so low density structures. I made them in this factory. Mamma mia, that's a spaghetti. Moving on from that as quickly as possible, rocket fuel. This is where we meet the atmospheric condenser. A machine that can very slowly suck various chemicals from the air with no input other than electricity. Which is nice of course, but when I say slowly, I really do mean slowly. If you want to make anything in great quantities with products from these condensers, make sure to leave plenty of space. For enough hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen for this pitiful amount of rocket fuel, I need over 60 of the things. But it's done now and we can make yellow science, part one, but not in the assemblers. Utility and production tech cards are made in these research servers. And yes, I really am only using four of them. Just like the earlier tech cards, this will output one card per second without any modules. And that's all I need to get through the research at my own very reasonable pace. Remember that it takes me hours to set up every new industry anyway. These next few tech cards also need their own special labs, so here they are researching logistics system. Once that's researched I can go and retrofit this little space to make all of the logistics chests. It's also at this point that I'll finally make some modular armour and stick a personal roboport in there with some solar panels and a battery. Next on my list then is that nice radioactive green stuff. And in Crastorio it really is rather spicy. Standing near a uranium patch or holding any in your inventory hurts quite a bit, so I built the mine here mostly remotely. For some reason though, bots don't seem to be capable of installing loaders correctly, so I had to go in and do that myself, probably developing prostate cancer or something. This isn't for nuclear power though, like you might expect, but rather for production tech cards, or purple science part one. In the middle of doing this though, something went very wrong indeed and my power production choked and died. I guess the spike in demand from suddenly using so many roboports stole all the power from the network which shut down the pump jacks and refineries, which of course meant that the petrol generators shut down. It got so bad that there wasn't even enough power to feed coal and water into the steam boilers. I got it back up and running by just disconnecting a huge chunk of the network to jump the petrol generators back into life, and then I made a load more steam generators afterwards to give some more redundancy in future. Sure would be a good idea to build nuclear now, huh? Anyway, let's just make a copper enriching plant, since we're still just raw dogging the filthy ore from the ground right now. I copied over the rare ore plant, but like iron, copper enriching uses sulfuric acid, so I'd have to pump some of that up here from the base to get this running. And now that I've got logistic chests, I can start dotting those little Dyson suck masters all over the place and have their filters automatically changed and washed. After dropping just a few of them around my miners and generators, my pollution footprint is actually shrinking. These things are incredibly overpowered and I'm not going to complain. Here's the little filter washing station. It uses the excess water from ore enriching to rinse the schmoo out of the filters before sending them back out to the network. It makes sense to do it here because it also produces dirty water. It's not exactly quick, but the filters last about 10 minutes anyway. Alright, in pursuit of purple science, part one, I need productivity modules, which means I'm going to need a lot more green circuits and electronic components. So I made this weird L-shaped blueprint for green circuit production and plopped a couple down. But by now I'm exhausting my wood, I mean I mean, I can't keep my wood up. Wait, no, I mean I don't have enough wood to go around? I need more greenhouses. Thankfully I can just copy paste my original greenhouse layout between these robo ports, but then I realised that I'm not actually making them anywhere in the logistics network which means we're taking a walk down memory lane to the starter base where we made them way back when. Unfortunately there weren't many stored here since the resources that fed this area dried up a long time ago. So I just popped in some materials from my inventory and did a few other bits remotely while I waited for them to build. With that up and running I decided randomly that now was the time to make a better and more easily expanded oil cracking blueprint. Possibly because I know that pretty soon I'll need a whole lot more plastic. Anyway let's get back to processing this uranium. I think I could probably have run a few more centrifuges from this number of miners, but it's going to make more than enough 238 for our purple tech cards anyway. 
It's a little bit spaghetti looking, but thanks to filtering on splitters, it's very easy to separate out all of the various outputs from this process. I'm turning the stone into landfill that gets sent out to storage and shoving the iron ore into one of these absolutely massive warehouses, because I knew that if I put it in a supply depot, it would never get picked up and would just fill up. I tacked on a few more research servers and there you go, purple science. Which to be honest, doesn't provide that many useful techs aside from beacons, which I'll research now, but seriously underutilize until much later. Because to make proper use of beacons requires far more forward planning than I've put into this base so far. That night, as I drifted off to sleep, with transport belts and construction bots floating around beneath my eyelids, the sudden realization came to me that I should make a maul now that I've got logistics chests. So that's what I did the next morning. I made a large paved space with roboport coverage and then had the resources I'd need in larger quantities brought in with request depots and belted directly onto provider chests so that they can be flown to assemblers as needed. I started with the advanced inserters that I haven't already automated, followed by red belts and red belt accessories, petrol generators, air purifiers, crushers. You get the drill, if you've played Factoria you'll know that you have to make a mall like this eventually or you'll go mad. Being able to just have these things in your logistics network is crucial, even if you're a complete smooth brain like me. But now I need more quartz. I didn't talk about it earlier, but it's a part of a few production lines. Mainly those damn electronic components that you just can't seem to make enough of. You get it by running sand through a filtration plant with water and can then smelt it directly into silicon. I love watching the robots build. I just love to see it. Alright, once again we need to bring in more iron to support all of this new stuff, so I built out a little road to this patch and stuck miners on it. I'll start using Mark II miners eventually, I promise. I don't really have a good reason why I'm not already, but try not to think about it. And with more ore, we'll need another enriching plant, which can just be directly copy-pasted from the copper ore one over the road, so that's good. I did realise though while looking at this that I'm balancing the belts twice, because when I originally made the blueprint, I didn't split the three belts into four, but whatever, it's functionally identical anyway, I think. Next I made artillery, because I like explosions, especially when they happen automatically and in the distance. And speaking of explosions in the distance, it's finally time for me to make a nuclear reactor, which I've never done before. So I set them all to making all the pieces I would need and then made a simple little loop for Kovarex enrichment and got building while it worked. I went to Google and typed in Factorio reactor design and just built one to spec. Which might not be exactly right, as I think steam turbines were buffed in Crastorio. But I got it kind of mostly powered up, because it turns out Kovarex enrichment takes a very long time to get going. But once it is fully up and running, it makes about a gigawatt, which is more than enough power for now. If you look up at the top left, you'll see that we're closing in on two hours of playtime here. So let's get started on the next two tech cards. Matter and optimization both of which require intermediate research data like the military cards did from earlier. Matter research data requires rare metals and plastic, which we've already got, but also lithium and immersite crystals, which we don't. Both of those involve new resources added by Crastorio, so let's start with the immersite. You pull it out of these pink caves with massive quarries and then feed it into crushers to get immersite powder and a whole load of sand, most of which I'll end up turning into glass. I know I said earlier you need a lot of sand, but this is actually too much sand. It's quite prone to backups if you can't find a use for it all. Once your immersite is in powder form, you can ship it off to either furnaces or chemical plants to be made into plates or crystals. For now, we just need them crystals. And they're a bit of a pain, because a standard chemical plant will make just one crystal per 30 seconds. I took a moment between setting these industries up to make myself a couple of exoskeletons and then got back to work, making the veritable hoard of atmospheric condensers I'd need. To get them crystals, you need nitric acid, which is made with rare metals, ammonia, and mineral water, which is the other new resource. You just pump it out of the ground like oil, so it's not really worth covering in much detail. Once you've got your nitric acid, you just stick it into chemical plants with your powder and some sulfuric acid, and bam, crystals. Once every 30 seconds. The whole time I was setting this up, I couldn't stop thinking about that one advert for some hair product in the 2000s that was so proud of the fact that it could do all this with no ammonia. For some reason that advert clearly stuck with me. The other thing you use that mineral water for is making lithium chloride by mixing it with hydrogen chloride, 
another powder which you then stick into electrolysis plants with regular old water this time to make lithium, and chlorine as a byproduct which I just flared off. The suckmasters can deal with the fact that I'm throwing chlorine into the atmosphere. A little circuit to only burn off when necessary would once again have been very useful here, but don't worry about it, this is fine, everything's fine. <clears throat> With that we're ready to make matter research data and by extension the matter tech cards themselves, both of which take place in another new building, the quantum computer, which has a very fancy animation and much like the majority of the new Crastorio buildings is also very loud. And yes, I really did only make two of these for the tech cards. They have a base crafting speed of three, so they'll make all the cards I need to get it done at my own special pace. They once again though need a new tier of lab, the Singularity Lab, which goes like a troop of Mongolian throat singers. There's not really all that much I can research with the matter tech cards on their own unless I wanted to get really into the freaky matter transfer stuff that lets you melt down certain resources to matter which can then be turned back into other certain resources. Uh, not for me, thanks. It kind of reminds me of that old Minecraft mod, what was it called? Equivalent Exchange, I think. Anyway, for me it's more of a transitional tech card. Not particularly immediately useful, but nonetheless required. Much the same as the optimization tech card, which requires sending rockets into space like we're Daddy Bezos himself. The only thing we're missing for this is rocket control units, so like the savage I am I just made a few gross lines of assemblers working from requester chests and let them slowly build up. I didn't really consider how many I would need and I wasn't really making enough, but each rocket launch with a satellite in the cargo produces a thousand research data so it doesn't need to be enormously quick, and that's optimization tech sorted. There's just two more tech cards to go. We're nearly there. At least that's what I was telling myself as I watched the playtime creep towards two days. Unfortunately though I need to spend a couple of hours shoring up a few resources before I can forge ever onwards to advanced tech cards, which is Yellow Science Part 2, and unlocks some seriously powerful stuff. For starters our copper and stone inflow just isn't cutting it, so they need a new mine each. Thankfully there's two patches next to one another here. I just have to eject the natives first. But if I'm going to have more ore then once again I'm going to need more enriching plants. And while I was doing all of this is when I finally realised it's probably time to upgrade the miners, so I set to making Mark II miners in the mall. Thankfully upgrading the miners is as simple as painting them with the upgrade tool and then waiting patiently for it to happen. Alright, back to Yellow Science Part 2. They require lithium sulphur batteries, immersium gear wheels and electric engine units. The immersium is simple enough, I mentioned earlier that you can stick the powder into furnaces to make immersium plates, after which you can make it into all of the usual paraphernalia like beams and gears. So that's handled by another furnace stack and a very simple little factory, and I already massively increased my engine unit production earlier when I made the robo factory, so the electric engines are as simple as pumping in some lube. What are more complex are the lithium sulphur batteries, but honestly they're pretty simple too. You just feed copper, lithium and sulfuric acid into a chemical plant. The complicated part is making enough lithium for it. Which I did with this abomination. Don't look at it for too long. Okay, that's enough, move on. Then I just stuck a pair of quantum computers onto the battery factory and had the other ingredients flown in and there you go. Advanced science. Or, or not. Purple science has gone quiet because we're using all of our U-238 in Coverex enrichment. I solved this problem with beacons and by finally starting to recycle the used fuel cells from the reactors which had just been sitting in boxes until now, and with that sorted, advanced science can unlock these very nice machines I alluded to earlier. The advanced chemical plant, assembler and furnace, all of which work many times faster than their normie counterparts. It sort of feels too late to go ahead and actually retrofit a lot of the base to properly utilise them, but for certain production lines tacking on a single advanced chemical plant can more than double throughput, so I'll be making use of them in some rather disgusting ways to quickly resolve issues in the final stretch here. Speaking of the final stretch, what exactly are we working towards here? Singularity tech cards. Which is purple science part 2 by the way. I never actually talked about it so I guess I will now. Obviously the ending of Crastorio 2 isn't to escape on a rocket or we'd have done that a good while ago. 
Instead, we're aiming to build an intergalactic transceiver in the hopes of sending a ping out into space that says something along the lines of, I made something that can do this out of sticks and rocks whilst fending off the Zerg hordes. That surely makes me worth picking up, now please come get me. And we're going to skip some stuff here. Nothing interesting mind you, just making sure various intermediate products are being made in good enough quantities to at least kind of support the push to the finish. And make no mistake, I am fully in push to the finish mode here. It's taken two days of playtime to get here and I don't intend to let it even approach three. I'd like my life back now, please. There was though this nice moment where I happened to capture a rocket launch whilst throwing a couple of advanced chemical plants at the Immersite crystal problem. It's always nice to watch them go up, no matter how inconsequential they become at the end. There was another, less nice moment, where in my notes I simply wrote, "Ugh, Chlorine! I guess there wasn't enough of it, because I built more production to support a rare ore patch over here. Let's have a look at these advanced furnaces. They really are incredible. I had to make Crestorio's green belts here just for four of them boosted with speed modules. There is one more tier of belts too purple ones. I only had to use these when enriching ores with advanced chemical plants, but if you're making a higher throughput factory than mine, I'm sure you'll get more use out of them than I did. Perhaps the best way though to demonstrate how strong these facilities are is with graphs. Check out my production graph for batteries after adding two advanced chemical plants. Wow, graphs. Alright, so singularity science. Surprisingly, it's not a particularly complex recipe and I don't need to set up much new. I just need to request AI cores and the materials for these things called matter stabilizers, which I guess stabilize matter. Before they can be used for our tech cards though, they need charging. Which perhaps disappointingly just means stuffing them into a charger and waiting a few seconds. Anyway, that's singularity science. With it, we can research the thing and win the game. However, the thing requires many very large bucket loads of electricity to charge. So first we'd best research this antimatter reactor. Which means we will in fact be briefly diving into the matter conversion system after all. Because the fuel cells for these reactors need filling with raw matter. Which I chose to source from mineral water because why not? And while I was setting that up, the research for the big purple game ender finished. Now I simply need to ask my drones to build it for me in this advanced assembler and wait a minute. And then somehow I made a big mess. But don't worry about that, let's stick the damn thing down here and start the reactors to feed it 30 gigawatts. Which is only half of its max draw, but that's good enough. And then I waited. Seriously, I just sat here and let it finish. By this point, with two days and eight hours played over just under a week, I was mentally exhausted and I could see the light of freedom peeping over the horizon. Fast forward a few minutes and it's ready. Just press the button, and then we can breathe. Huh? What? Oh, okay. For some reason the game start tooltip popped up here to ruin the moment of triumph. Jeez, talk about a ruined orga. Uh, YouTube guidelines dictate that I probably shouldn't talk about that actually. So that's it, I did it. Was this slow? Quick? I have no idea, but it definitely wasn't pretty. But ugly things succeed all the time. And the strangest part, despite it all, as I'm writing this and watching back my footage, I just want to play more Factorio. It really does embed itself into your psyche like that. But for now, I know I always tell you all to remain indoors for your own safety, but I think I need to go and touch grass. I've earned it, and just one touch can't hurt, right? Before I go, thanks for all the support. If you want to, check out my Patreon or become a channel member, like the video, subscribe, or just make yourself a nice meal for a change. I don't know. I'm gonna go get me that grass. Ah, grass. Love a good bit of grass. Ah, there it is, there's the grass. Oh god. Oh no, they're back. <coughs>